Hiya, Ollie. Um, could you just bring us up to date with the situation regarding, uh, first of all, Rafael Varan and how long he's likely to be out for, whether <laughs> Maguire's going to be fit, who's going to play in central defence, and also Fred and Cavani and whether they've got any chance of being involved, please? Yeah, you know, when the international breaks are sometimes a time to um, cross your fingers and uh, hope for the best, because... Uh, as we see with uh, Rafael, he's uh, he's got an injury out for a few weeks. But then again, Victor and Eric uh, played in the internationals and got good game time. So that that was good for us. With uh, regards to uh, Fred and Edinson, they played a full game this morning. Half one uh, kicked off. So of course we're. Not counting on them. We, we've got to give them the time to rest and recover, <clears throat> and which I, of course, you have to. Um, they, they played well. That, that was a good thing for us, not injured. But uh, hopefully they can be involved again on um, during midweek in, in the Champions League. And Harris just joined us on the grass this morning. So uh, uh, that was the uh, first time he's been on the grass uh, Ahmad, first time on the grass today as well. So, uh, we we look quite strong. Ian Irvin. Ollie, what have you made to Leicester's start to the season? Because particularly in the last few matches, they've looked way off where they were last season. Well, I, th <clears throat> I think it's it's early on, early doors in the season. And sometimes you... Uh, you don't really see the real picture uh, so early. Of course, they're in the Europa League as well, so they've got loads of games. And I've got the utmost respect every time we, we play against Leicester because they've signed well again, spent money on good players, and that will gel into their team. And sometimes it takes time for them to uh, to gel. I've seen some, some very good football they've played uh, at times, and uh, sometimes... You know, as most of us, we've uh, conceded goals that we shouldn't. Uh, but uh, as every time we go down there, it's going to be a very d difficult, uh, difficult game. It begins a, a tough run for United, doesn't it, in the league and the Champions League? Do you think this run could actually bring the best out in your team, though? Because you've had a, a decent record since you've been the manager in matches against the, the tougher sides. Yeah, of, <clears throat> of course. We've uh, added some... Uh, Exciting players going forward. I think we've we've scored goals. We've uh, and it, it's it's a nice time to be uh, be an attacking attacking player for uh, for us as well. And we need to uh, we need to keep that going. Keep uh, attacking. Keep uh, having the Man United DNA as well as defending well and come together as a team and make sure we're um, we're hard to play against. Uh, then. I can't think Atalanta now. I can't think Liverpool. It's only Leicester, and that, and that's that's going to probably be the key uh, that we only focus one game at a time and maybe spells in games. And uh, it's um, uh, we're looking we're looking forward to to this run. Uh, it's every every good player, every, all the best players want to play against the best teams, and we've got some of the best teams coming up. Mark McAdam. Hi Oli, I'd uh, Hi. love to get your perspective on one of the big talking points in football this week, which has been the takeover of, of Newcastle United. They're now potentially the richest club in world football. How do you think that will change the dynamic at the top of the Premier League? When you go back 25 years, there was that famous rivalry between Newcastle and Manchester United and Sir Alex Ferguson and Kevin Keegan came out with those words, I would love it if we beat them. How do you think things will be affected moving forward with Newcastle? No, of course, it's uh, it's not been my focus, but I've of course, I've noticed that it uh, it happened. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't think it was going to go through, uh, but now it, it has and it is going to change the, the picture. Uh, I don't don't know the plans of of the new owners, so of course I can't say here if they're gonna spend loads of money or what they're gonna what they're gonna do. But then again, it's a, it's a fantastic football club uh, with with tra traditions, uh, and I enjoyed that spell when Newcastle were up there. Probably um, short term, it's gonna change them, but definitely long term, it's gonna be uh, interesting to uh, to watch and. Uh, 
as you said, it has been the talk of football in the last uh, few weeks, uh, and uh, if they if they can do that with the results, I, th- I think that's what they want in the end, of course. Um, but as I said, uh, it's not my focus. I'm uh, I don't want to join in that political discussion. Oh, sorry. There was a follow up. We, I, we can't hear you. Sorry, just on un, on mute. Okay. Oh, so I think I got muted. Oh, yeah, just, just a quick word on Marcus. He's been back in training. Can we expect yeah. him to feature this weekend? He's in the squad. Yes. So if he's going to start or not, I can't tell you now because it uh, uh, it wouldn't be right. But uh, he's worked really hard throughout the whole layoff, and he's been bright this week. He had a sixty-minute uh, involvement against the. Uh, behind closed doors last week, so he's fit and re- rearing to go. Michael Gray? <clears throat> hey, Oli. Hi, yeah. Yeah, Oli. Yeah, Oli. I mean, you've had the disappointment of a few of your players coming back after this international break with injuries, but um, one, of, one of the standouts was has to be Cristiano scoring four goals in two games. Over the next coming weeks, can you actually afford to leave him out of that starting 11? <laughs> uh, you know, he's. Uh, He's an exceptional player, exceptional finisher and a goal scorer, exceptional professional. Um, it's hard to leave him out. Uh, and I think ev- everyone would uh, love to, uh, to uh, how do you say, you know, when it's, say, if you can go and play six games in six days and you play this, the same 11 every time, it's great. But it's rotation, you know, we need to get to... April, May, with uh, with everyone firing, uh, we got to May and final stretch of the season this season, and we were a little bit too tired. Um, I'm the manager. I manage, I manage the players. I manage for the club, uh, and that's the. Uh, but of course, it's it's nice to have him on the pitch because he, he's he'll always uh, come up with the goods, and uh, the more we have him on the pitch, the better. Thanks, Ollie. Cheers. Oh, yeah. you, your former teammate Andy Cole is, is 50 today. I know you really want to sing him, him happy birthday, but can you tell me your favourite favorite Cole moment and which of your current strikers have got elements of his game? Oh, your, uh, Yorkie and Cole together. I think that's got to be the favourite uh, uh, period for Andy. Uh, you know, him and Yorkie were exceptional, that 99 team. The... Uh, Probably when we clinched the uh, semi-final win against Juventus, or uh, the goal Andy scored when he came on against uh, Tottenham and uh, chipped the keeper, and uh, his attribute is so sharp. He was so quick off the off the mark, and to get in behind players, confidence in front of goal was brilliant. So um, I enjoyed playing with him because he had something I didn't with it, with that exceptional pace and. Um, Current strikers I've got, of course, Cristiano and uh, Edinson. They're a little bit different. Anthony is different. M- maybe Marcus Rashford and and uh, probably Anthony Alanga have part of that uh, electric pace that uh, Andy used to have. But they ra- they run a little bit more off the ball than he did, though, because I had to do all that running for him when I played with him. Yes, hello, Ola. Hey, all bro. Yeah, all bro. Uh, it's been some some talk around Jesse Lingard's future lately. Um, and uh, what can you tell us about his future and his his contract situation? And and what's your plan plans with him going forward this season? Jesse's had a, a, a good uh, start to the season. Of course, he's he's come on, uh, scored a few goals for us. That's been uh, very uh, important for us. And he knows what we want. We've, uh, we want to prolong his contract. Uh, we see him as, a, as an important player for us. Then it's, it's obviously up to him uh, to get more playing time. Uh, maybe up to me, giving him more playing time because he, he deserves to. But every time I pick a team, uh, I have to leave some players out. So hopefully we can get a, get a deal sorted for Jesse because we really rate him and we value him in and around the club. He's a, he's a top player and a top person.